All right, we're picking back up here with um, more grid calculations. Um, so we finished off with the easy ones of the going from non-grid to grid or grid to non-grid. Those are simple, multiply, divide. Um, but there is a grid conversion factor formula, which is this formula down here, that you'll use when you're going from one grid to another grid. So a six to one grid to a 10 to one or a 10 to one to a five to one, something like that. Use your common sense on these. Um, the higher the grid ratio, more mass you need. Okay, so you'll have to remember those Bucky factors. Okay, two, three, four, five, five, six. Maybe you'll remember it that way. All right, so this is a practice question on moving from one grid to a higher grid ratio. All right, it's asking me 10 mass was used with a six to one grid on the original exposure. The repeat exposure was made using a 12 to one grid. What is the new mass? Just some questions that I always uh, recommend sort of starting with when you're trying to do any sort of any math question or any radiology question in general. What is this question asking me? What is it asking me to do? Should I be using a formula? Which formula should I use? And which way should my number go? Should my answer go up or should it go down? And we'll, I'll walk you through those here. So break your question down and find the keywords. And I know this on the computer is tough. So if you need to get a scrap paper or a little white erase board, that might be great. Um, the boards let like, so you have a white erase board. So if you want to practice with that. What is this question asking me? It's asking me to figure out the new mass with a change in grid ratio. So which formula am I going to use? I'm going to use the grid conversion formula. Which way should my number go? So this question is telling me I use 10 mass with a 6 to 1 grid. And now I have to repeat the exposure with a 12 to 1. Well, the 12 to 1 is much higher than a 6 to 1. So my number has to go up. I need more mass if I have a higher grid. So we're going to figure that out, OK? All right, so plug your information into the formula. So here's a picture of the formula here, MAS1 over MAS2, grid factor 1 over grid factor 2. So here's your question again, 10 mass with a 6 to 1. We're moving up to a 12 to 1. It's asking me to find the new mass. So mass 1 is 10, mass 2, we don't know. we got to figure that out. Grid factor, um, so I was using a 6 to 1 grid to start. That has a grid factor of 3. I am moving to a 12 to 1, and that has a grid factor of 5. So you're going to plug it in. I kind of put them over here in the equation here. And all you're going to do is cross multiply and divide. So just remember, our number has to go up. If your number goes down, you're putting your numbers in the wrong places, and I'll show you that down here. So 10 was our original, right? And five is our grid factor two, so that goes down here. So we're gonna cross multiply 10 times five and divide it by three, which gives me the 16.7 mass, or 17 mass is your new mass. Um, so that number went up, right? We went from 10 mass to 17. If you put your numbers in the wrong spot, so I flipped them for this one, our number went down to six. So say you're doing, a, you're, you have multiple choices. If you have four answers to um, go through, how many of them are going up from 10? You probably could knock out two. Maybe you'll knock out three and then you don't even have to do your math. If there's only one that is higher than 10, it's gotta be it, right? All right, here's another one. 32 mass was used on an eight to one grid. We're gonna repeat it with a five to one. What is the new mass? Again, what is this question asking you to do? Which formula do I use? Which way should my number go? Before you even do anything, I want you to figure out what this is asking you. It's asking you to repeat an exposure with a lower grid. Okay, so let's go to the next page. We're gonna break it down. All right, what is this question asking me? Again, it's asking me to figure out a new mass with a lower grid ratio. Which formula? Grid conversion formula, because that's what we're doing on this uh, video. <laughs> uh, which way should my number go? It's gotta go down, right? I am using a five to one after an eight to one, so eight to one is higher, so I have to decrease my number. So my MAS, it, it's gotta go down. All right, so let's put the info into your formula. So same formula. So 32 mass okay, was my mass number one. Again, we're looking for mass number two. 
8 to 1 is my first grid, and that's a factor of 4. My grid that I'm swapping to, so grid number 2 is a 5 to 1, and that's a factor of a 2. You're just going to plug these numbers into your formula here, and then cross multiply and divide. This is giving me an MAS of 16. Is that right? Does it make sense? Yes. As I was using 32 to start, I'm going from an 8 to 1 grid to a 5 to 1, so I'm going down in my grid ratio. My MAS has to go down. If you mismatched your numbers and put them in the wrong spots, it's going to go up. It's going to go up to 64, and then you'll know that you're, um, you've got to rise somewhere. Okay, watch for that. Okay, I doubt this will happen to you, but um, if do you have to calculate grid ratio changes and a distance change? Okay, this is like a unicorn question, I think. Um, but just in case it happens. So a radiograph was made using 100 centimeters SID, 12 mass, and a 12 to 1 grid. If the examination will be repeated at a distance of 180 cm and using a 5 to 1 grid, what will your new mass value be? All right, so I found the key terms for you down here. And I'm going to show you how I know which ones are the key terms. First, I look to this end sentence, and it's asking me, what, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a new mass. All right. It gave me two different SIDs. It gave me an MAS and two different grids. So what you're actually going to do is use two different formulas. All right. And if you've already, we've already gone over the inverse square law and the direct square law, um, so you're going to use a little bit of both. And actually, it doesn't matter which way you start it or which order you do it in, but I, I do mine the same way every time, so I'm going to show you how to do it my way. So here's that question again. I put it up top. I start with the changing grid first. So I take my original numbers, 12 mass, 12 to 1 grid, at 100 cm. We're moving down to a 5 to 1 grid. So I know my mass has to go down. So I'm going to plug my numbers into this conversion factor. And remember, we got to use our Bucky factors. So 12 to 1 was a factor of 5. 5 to 1 was a factor of 2. Calculate out all that out. It gives me 4.8 mass. I'm going to move over here to the second part of the question. Now I have to figure out, using this direct square law or the exposure maintenance formula, whichever term um, that you're using, I'm going to plug in my numbers into this formula. So my mass 1 is going to be the 4.8 that I calculated over here. My distance 1 is going to be the 180 centimeters, but that has to be squared. So that is, I'm going to put 10,000 there. MAS 2, I don't know. And distance 2, I know, because it's 180 centimeters, but again, it's got to be squared, okay? So the 32... Um, 1,400. And again, all you're going to do is cross multiply and divide. This is really easy math once you know where to plug your numbers. Okay, So you're going to multiply the 4.8, multiply down, divide by here, and it'll give you your new mass. So your new mass um, is going to be 15.5 when you've moved from 100 cm to 180 cm. Right? So we moved farther away, our mass is going to have to increase, okay, if that makes sense. Um, I haven't found that it matters which order you do it in, as long as you do it correctly. So pick one to start with. I always start with my grid change because I find that one to be easy, and I don't have to square any numbers. And then once you figure that out, you can move on over to the exposure maintenance formula. All right, so just a grid roundup, just some notes. What's the primary purpose of grids? to improve contrast. They absorb the scatter radiation so it doesn't hit your image. Um, it allows the primary beam to pass through to the image receptor, which is what you want. Use on parts greater than 10 centimeters. That should be kind of a flashcard for you if you've got um, some notes on grids. 10 cm is one of the ones I want you to write down. Remember, it's created with lead strips that are separated by interspace materials. The definition for grid ratio Height of the lead strips divided by the distance between, or h over d. Frequency of the grid is the number of lead strips it has per inch. And Bucky factor, or conversion factor, go back to that chart. 
Okay, two, three, four, five, five, six. Um, for your calculations, changing from non-grid to grid, just multiply. Grid to non-grid, divide. If you're changing from one grid ratio to another, then you've got to use your formula. If you're changing grid and distance, you're going to have to use the two formulas. So grid conversion formula and the direct square law or exposure maintenance um, formula, whichever those notes that you use. Okay, hope that was helpful.